Oh yes, I. Uh, this is a, a part two of um, Spoluchian Explorers. Uh, just a quick, uh, kind of quick recap. We know that Spoluchian Explorers who went to explore caves. There were five guys, and uh, the cave closes because the, there's like a landslide, and they get stuck on the ground. Uh, they try to communicate with people out there. And, you know, it's gonna, um, you know, the engineers and the crane and all that stuff will take a whole month to dig them out. Meantime, they have no food, no water, um, and uh, they roll a dice. Uh, they say, well, you know, they're gonna, this is a hypothetical case. They roll a dice to see who who's gonna get eaten for the food. And there's five guys. And this guy who can't comes up with his idea, he gets unlucky, you know, uh, with his hypothetical case that Alon Fuller sets up for us to interpret all these different legal uh, principles that would uh, that that come into play. The thing is that what is very interesting about a case, yeah, so they get stuck and it's going to take the whole month to get them out safely and all that. Meantime, they, you know, as they, they decide to roll the dice and when they roll the dice the guy is very unfortunate who came up with the idea said you know he gets eaten and eaten now the thing is that what Lon Fowler talks about at the first idea is that the idea of contract right so because they all agreed it's like a Rus Russian roulette right they all agreed and whoever gets unlucky uh, gets eaten right so they have agreed to this contract um, to to perform we're not going to say oh, i'm not going to go into legality whether it's a promise for promise or act for an act contract or uh, act for promise or promise for an act or act for an act um contract but for our purposes here is that what is the meaning of the contract they made a contract um he gets eaten um and when they come out they get prosecuted they've been they are sent to be hanged uh, because they ate a man uh, but at the same time they were deep down on the ground um, there was no other way it was there is no other way of surviving other than uh, doing what they did right now can we just say that it that is justified in their under social contract in and under the contract they agreed to play and they all knew what the outcome be that one of them are is going to be killed and eaten um, now, if we apply morality, they, if we apply the mor moral contract of that we should treat, you know, others as the way we would like to be treated, then um, um, should that be should that apply? Well, that shouldn't because it's it's different. The rules when you're in a cave and you're on the ground and you're fighting for your life. I think the rules change and. Can the rules apply the same rules as if we, you know, as if you were somewhere out and um, you do have you are um, you have accessibility to help, you have accessibility to uh, protection and all that. But when you are down under the cave, uh, does the law come to protect you? And can we make the legal contract a, a contract that's going to have such a dire consequences in terms of? Um, in terms of what they did so they rolled the dice and it's called pure luck um this guy gets low he loses he gets eaten and uh, the four guys survive right now they get prosecuted but since they are so down in cave and, and i mentioned this before um they're not protected by us because we cannot by the society or the people because they are so deep down they have no protection legal protection or any kind of protection that society can provide because they are inaccessible and to get to them is going to take the whole month now are they left to fend for themselves and be on their own and find the way to to survive which i believe they did they found a way to survive and to create a contract that is outside what we call state of society or that is outside of our way of living which and Lund Fuller brings up this you know if if coexistence is impossible under the rules then when does this idea of each man for himself 
uh, uh, defend. But here, it's not each man for himself. They didn't go killing each other. They decided to kill only one person. Now, if we are applying the morality of that, we could say, well, die or shall not kill, no matter what kind of circumstances, right? So we're talking about this moral and religious purpose. But if we apply Kantian uh, in categorical imperative, and when he says we should never treat human beings as an end, all, um, we should always treat um, human beings never as a mere, mere means only, always as an end in itself, that means then more it's morally wrong killing this guy and eating him up to um to do that right and so the the Kant would say well no you're using a human being as a mean to survive even though the question even though it's survived so it's you cannot that is it violates the <clears throat> legal imperative now if we are going to talk about a categorical utilitarianism which maxim maximizes we know utilitarianism is principal utility is um, um uh, an action is right that it maximizes the the action is right if it maximizes the most happiness if it produces the most happiness now we can talk about here we have a one guy versus four guys right four guys surviving one guy dying um, that could increase the happiness of those four guys, right? Uh, because they survived and family going to be happy to see them, but then one guy is dead. Um, the consequences of that, we could, we could argue in utilitarianism, you could, act, you could argue um, both ways, you could argue as a Jeremy Bentham would want. Oh yeah, it's, it's permissible to do that based on utility. But if we're talking about uh, utility as taking everybody else's happiness into consideration, then this guy who's going to be eaten, is, is he going to be happy? Or when the family finds out or friends or whoever that might, he might have, that is not happy, right? So if we're talking about the, the happiness principle, uh, in some instances we could argue that no, what they did does not satisfy even the principle of utility. But if we look the way John Stuart Mill and Jeremy Bentham applied uh, a utility, then we could say, yes, um, this, is, this is the way it is. Um, another thing is that, <clears throat> and talking about the contract, the legality of the situation, can the, the contract that they made, is that a legal contract? Is that a binding contract? Meaning to roll the dice and see whoever happens to get the wrong number dies um and that's something that if we are creating that kind of situation uh then it would be um it would be very interesting and like in the same thing in dante's inferno when agolino and his sons um you know well they're locked in and agolino the father uh, has no choice but to survive he he's in prison and he's with his sons and grandsons locked in and he has no choice but and he's debating whether should he eat him or he should he not eat him because the prisoners are not giving him any food or the the children um so these are the, like a dire circumstances i mean i know dante's inferno and that's what it's called inferno um it's a hell but um in case of this pollution explorers um is that contract binding in terms of the day and can they be prosecuted because they freely participated in the contract they decided they agreed to they knew what the outcome of the dice will be that one of them is going to be uh, uh killed and eaten um so the question is still is and this is where long follow applies many different ideas and principles and I wanted to discuss just the social contract, the contract, and I don't think that the contract that they made down there among themselves, I don't think it should exonerate them when they are out of the cave and say, well, we made a contract, uh, we were in a bad situation, and uh, now we survived, but one guy died. Um, and uh, just the thinking about this thought is it's really, it's not just disgusting, but it's a, you know, a cannibalism. Um, so I wanted to talk, that's all I wanted to say about a social contract, and this is a part uh, two. Uh, next thing we will talk about um, a 
idea of positive law versus morality. And I kind of touched up on that right now, but next one I am trying to discuss more how the positive law is going to apply to uh, this situation. Uh, that's all for right now. Thank you.